Hi, this is JP Morgan, and the Slanted Lens today is going to look at an eight-sided softbox. They call them octodomes or octoboxes or octobanks. Every manufacturer has a different name for these boxes. But the reality is it's an eight-sided softbox. How does that compare to a regular softbox? What is the area of coverage for the different sizes of octodomes? You know, exactly what is the quality of light that you get from the different sizes of octodomes? For the purposes of our conversation, I'm going to call them octodomes because all the boxes that we're looking at today come from Photoflex and they're called octodomes. So let's take a look at an eight-sided softbox, an octodome. What's the quality of light? And what does it do? Let's start with the area of coverage. Now, if you watch the slanted lens, you've seen us put our 12-foot tape marks up on the wall, our target that's 12 foot wide by 12 foot high. We want to see what the area of coverage is when we put our octodomes six feet away from the wall. We'll take a picture with each of the octodomes, the small, medium, and large. Then we'll see what that area of coverage is on our target. Here's a small octodome, and it covers about a 12-foot radius with a one-stop falloff. The medium octodome also covers a 12-foot radius with a one-stop falloff. As large as this large octodome is, it still covers a 12-foot radius with a one-stop falloff. At this point, we see that different sizes of octodomes don't cover a different area. They all cover about the same area, a 12-foot radius with a one-stop falloff. Larger boxes don't cover a larger area. They all cover the same area. We learned this very same principle with soft boxes when we did the same test. The difference is in the quality of light. Smaller octodomes make a more directional and hard light. Larger octodomes make a softer, more wrapping light. Especially with this seven foot octodome, it is such a large source that it's going to wrap around your subject, it's going to almost destroy any shadow you'd have in the background. Octodomes do have a couple of advantages. One, they're a little smaller footprint. They're a little narrower, easier to get them into places. So that, in that way, they're easier to use. They also give a round catch light in the eye rather than a square. You know, some people have different feelings about this. A round looks more like the sun, so it's going to look like the sun in a person's eye. Square feels more like a window. So if you're a product photographer, you probably want a softbox because that looks like a window light. Those nice long square highlights on a bottle or a product make a lot of sense. In a person's eye, a round reflection really is a nice look. I prefer that, personally. It's just a matter of opinion, what you like. Let's look at how an octodome feathers compared to a softbox. When we aimed our small octodome at a 45 degree angle to the wall, it dropped off one stop at center. When we aimed our medium softbox at a 45 degree angle to the wall, it dropped off two stops at center. What we've learned is a softbox falls off much quicker than an octodome. The reason is the back of the octodome, the light is much closer to the face. So as you turn it, it has to turn further for it to fall off on the subject. Softbox, the light's much further back. You don't have to turn it as far to get it to fall off on the subject. So it's a matter of the octodome has to be turned further to get it to feather the light on the person. About a stop difference between the two. Let's take a look at the quality of light you get from octodomes when we shoot a person. Here's a large octodome. You can see that the large light source, it just wraps around the body. There's no shadow on the wall at all. This really is a gorgeous wrapping light, really meant to be a large soft source. This is great for fill, it's great with gold or silver lining as a source that looks a lot like the sun. This is really an interesting light, a large seven foot octodome. Here's our medium octodome on the talent. You can see that the light is not quite as soft and it doesn't wrap as much as the last light did. You have a little more shadow building on the wall, but it's still a very pretty source. Here's our small octodome on our talent. You can see that the light is a lot more directional now. You have a bigger shadow on the wall, it's more defined. It really becomes a harder light source when we get this small. Let's look at using an octodome as a beauty dish. Interestingly enough, when you pull the face off from an octodome and just leave the baffle in, that round source takes on a lot of the same qualities as a beauty dish. Here's our area of coverage when we remove the face and leave the baffle in. Let's take a look at how this looks as kind of a pseudo beauty dish on our talent. This is a wonderful setup for shooting people, this octodome with the face off and a grid or the octodome with the face on and a grid. Both of them become a wonderful light source for shooting people. Light is about control. This gives you more control. When you add a grid to the equation, now you can really get your light source very narrow. You can control just a little area, a pool of light. I think it's a wonderful tool to use and I use it all the time. This is our area of coverage for a small octodome with a grid on it. This is what our talent looks like using that same setup, a small octodome with a grid on it. We're now going to take our octodomes and we're going to put them into use. We're going to do a two light setup. Asa is here with us, she's beautiful, that makes this very easy for me. But we're going to take her and do a couple of two light setups. It should be very interesting. So we're going to get started. All of our lighting setups were shot at a 60th of a second F8 160 ISO. In this first setup we use a small octodome with a grid as our key light. 
Here's the first frame. The Octodome has been swung slightly towards the camera. This feathers the light off the background so that on her highlight side, we see a darker background. On her shadow side, we see a lighter background. It's a nice way to feather the light so she separates from our background. We're now going to add a medium Octodome as our rim light. In our first setup, our key light was 45 degrees to our talent. In the second setup, we're going to move the key light around so it's 90 degrees to our talent. We're going to move the talent into the light so it becomes a very strong profile. From camera left, we're going to add a medium octodome, really down low so it becomes a fill light on her face. When we turn Asa to the light, we'll dial the light up just about one stop to open her face up and make it more of a key light up front. Here's some examples of this setup. In our next setup, we're going to use the large octodome as a background. We've set this up to be exposed one stop brighter than the exposure we're going to use on her face. This gives us a nice white background. Now we're going to place a small octodome to camera right about 45 degrees to our talent. This will serve as our key light. This gives me a clean white background that doesn't destroy the shadows on my talent. Our last setup is a full body shot of Asa. I'm going to use a small octodome with a grid to keep the light just on her face, not so much on her body. This octodome gives me a slight glow on the background. We're going to add a rim light on camera left to open up her hair in the background slightly. This is a very simple, moody setup. This has been a great experience for me. You know, soft boxes are a mainstay for most photographers, but I think octodomes have a great place in their arsenal of lighting equipment as well. So I use them both. I hope you'll see some great advantages to both of them and learn some things about the different tools today. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. That's cool. Yeah. and this is cooking with your camera. Today, we're gonna make sugar cookies with our DIY cookie cutters. These are so cute! Let's get started. Let's start with a glass bowl large enough to make two dozen cookies. First, we take 230 grams of butter and we soften it up. I mean, really get it soft. Get in there and just soften it. Now that's soft butter. Now we do 3 fourths cups of sugar. We don't want those little pitties eating too much sugar. Now we take 3 egg yolks. We don't want any of that white gooey stuff. Now we need a good shot of vanilla. I mean a really good shot. <laughs> In a separate bowl, let's mix the dry ingredients. Flour, baking soda, and a pinch of salt. Mix both bowls together. Really get in there. Now when you get it all mixed together, we'll roll it out. Cut your camera shape out with a cookie cutter and then use this to make the camera imprint. Like this. Perfect. Is that a hair in there? Gross. Let's bake them. Bake for eight to 10 minutes. Voila, that's how you make DIY cookies. Thanks for cooking with your camera.